side jewelry makers so we're going to uh we're going to have a really lovely afternoon uh doing a lot of wire work so if we have a look at the advent uh today we are on number uh can you remind me adam please is it is it nine yes we are on number nine so let's have a look in here let's see what we've got oh it's exciting exciting oh let's see oh look it's so beautiful so we've got in here a really really gorgeous high-end beautiful south sea pearl so this is absolutely it's exquisite isn't it really really beautiful now it's through drilled which is nice so if you wanted to i mean you could just use your uh, if you've got a bale that you wanted to do, uh, to use in that and just glue that in there. It's quite subtle, that drill hole, so you wouldn't necessarily notice at the bottom. Uh, or you can use it uh, in the same way that I'm going to, which is in, if I just pop that down there, I'm going to keep it safe in there. Beautiful South Sea Pearl, uh, which is the floral pendant. So um, I've actually put it with uh, sterling silver. Uh, stone silver wire work and framing it in there so uh, it's yeah entirely up to you but obviously if you want to make the flower and, and it will be um, the flower design uh, I'm going to show you in a mix of uh, plated metal and in sterling silver so it gives you the option with both so it's a really really it's a nice a nice design to do uh, whatever it is you're going to do with it so if I just pop that safe I'm going to keep that so I don't lose that because we'll be coming to that at the end of the project. So I'm going to pop that there. Okay. So if we have a, a run through of um, some of the, uh, the, the, the tools and the uh, materials that we're going to use. So if we have a look. So you can see here, so tools wise, um, I'm going to work with my standard pliers. Um, I've got my flush cutters. I've got my chain nose pliers, my round nose pliers. Uh, depending on the size of flower that you want, I'm actually going to work with uh, maybe my um, bale making pliers. And then I've got um, a selection of different size mandrels here. So what I'd say is if, if, you've, got, if you've got a ring mandrel, great, you can use that. Uh, but if you can see the difference here, so one is a, it's a, a lip gloss, one's a pen, nail varnish uh, are really good as well because what you're looking for is you can see the difference here of these mandrels so this one is a tapered mandrel which obviously for different ring sizes but then here with these ones we've actually got straight sides so like I say if you've only got something that um, uh, you've got a ring mandrel but I mean it's quite likely that you would have a pen as well you can get away with it with a ring mandrel just near the top and uh, you just have to be careful that you don't sort of slide all the way down uh, to the the wider part but it's good if you can use something household object where you've got that that straight edge so i've got a variety of uh, mandrel mandrel sizes um again so tools wise if you have so i'm just going to move this over you can see if you want to do it in exactly the same way um as i've done with mine and you work with your sterling silver you will need to do a little bit of uh, work with your torch so it's not it's not soldering but what we will be doing is we'll be using um using the torch and using the heat to ball up the wire okay but we'll go through that you can absolutely do this design without doing that if you want to but it'd be nice to i think to show you how how that works it's a lovely really really lovely skill to have so if you want to make your stamen in the same way um i've done mine we'll be using the torch there so i'll move that out of the way here so if we look at some of the, um, the wire gauges as well, so the materials that we're going to um, work with, I've got, um, if you want to have a go at first, maybe with your, your, your base uh, metal, that might, if you've never made any flowers before, that's a good way to, um, to work with it, have a practice with those. So I'm also going to work with, um, I've got some uh, sterling silver 0.4, so you can see there actually uh, Ross has put that on screen for you so if you wanted to um, uh, get some of that which 0.4 sterling silver wire is really really lovely to have anyway I mean you know, if you're going to do your rosary linking it works beautifully for that um, it's a really great wire to have lovely gauge so that's my 0.4 
so because I'm going to be doing a, a weave with that, what I want to have is I want to have a, um, a, a thicker base wire to weave onto. So uh, on the pendant, if you've got um, this is a 0.8 or a one mil sterling silver wire, that's what I'm going to use there. So what I'd say is if you're making the jump, maybe you're going to have a go uh, at making this. Uh, you might want to work in your base metal first, and then you can go um, you can go up into your sterling silver. If you are going to work with sterling silver and maybe you need to uh, file a little bit, so I've just got like a filing pad there. Again, that's the other thing that you could use is if you've got, uh, if you maybe you work with it, you, you look after your nails, you can get the, the sort of the quite reasonably priced um, foam blocks uh, in, in sort of pound shops and things and that, that will work with your sterling silver there, but I've just got a sanding pad there. So I think tools wise, that is pretty uh, pretty much it and the materials. Um, I might pop in some jump rings as well uh, and a chain um, to have as, as my bail. And um, obviously if you're gonna have it as a necklace, you could absolutely make this design into a brooch or um, maybe smaller scale earrings if you wanted to too. Okay, so if we have a look then, so I'm just gonna move this over and let's see where we're gonna start. So if I just pop that on here, So what we want to think about is we're going to we're going to make the um, make the framework of the flower. So what we're looking for, and I'll show you the different stages. What we're going to have is we're going to make a framework using our structural wire that looks something like this. Once you've made this part, this gives you lots and lots and lots of options because you can fill it with the weave. You can see so something like that. You could uh, fill it with seed beads if you wanted to. Uh, chips and nuggets work really well. So it's just be, we'll be using, oh, so there we go. I think you've got on screen there if you wanted to work with your, um, your sterling silver. And so that is your, that's what's on screen now would be your framework if you're gonna work with your sterling silver. Uh, and don't forget that, that one mil uh, wire is what I make all my stacker rings with as well. So that's a really good, it's a great wire to have. So you can see, so I'm gonna make the framework and then we're gonna put the, um, you, you know, I am actually gonna do the figure of eight weave in there, but you can use, you can use different things um, to fill the, the petal area. So if I just move that out of the way. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make this framework. Now we want to have it out of um, one continuous piece of wire rather than uh, so we've got five petals in this case rather than five separate pieces of wire that we've then got to think about connecting. So it's going to be a lot stronger like this. So if you didn't want to have fill with anything, you could just, you could leave it at that. And because it's, it's, it's a one continuous piece of wire, so it's going to be quite strong. So to do that, and I'm going to use the, um, uh, the you can see, so I've got a little uh, lip gloss there and I'm going to use that as my mandrel. So I've got my 0.8. I'm gonna leave it on the reel. Okay, and I use my dominant hand, which is, so I'm right-handed. I'm gonna hold the wire in my left hand. Okay, I'm gonna just press it against here, so with my thumb. I'm gonna turn away. So you can see I'm starting to pull it quite firmly against the side of that mandrel, and I'm turning away with my right hand. So it's really is, it's sort of really taking the form of that round mandrel. So you can see now, so if I were working on say the, the tapered ring mandrel, I'd have to try and make sure that I was sort of uh, staying in the same area so that the, um, these circles would all be the same size. But so with this one, I can work all the way up, all the way down, and because it's not tapered, it's gonna be the same size. But what does matter is how tightly I'm pulling against this. So I wanna try and keep my tension uh, you know, so how much I'm sort of pulling on the wire. So I'm controlling it here. So if I lift my thumb up, you can see there's a slight indent there because I am pulling, pulling a little bit in this direction and in the opposite direction, just so I've got good tension there. So that when, when I release it, yes, it's gonna sort of spring out a little bit, but it will hopefully be a, quite a similar size to that. We don't wanna do it too baggy so that it then either doesn't make a nice circle or they're all different sizes. Uh, and you know, if you make it too large, you'll be there weaving for uh, probably till next Christmas, which if weaving is your thing, then brilliant. But um, 
you know you don't want to have them too large because you will have to um, do all that weaving so I'm going to stop there so if we look at this so if we hold here and we're going to count these so I've got one two three four five six seven eight nine so I know I've definitely got enough there to make five uh, five petals I've probably gone a little bit bit enthusiastic so I'm going to take this out and you can see that spring that little bit of a spring back but we've now got a coil there so I'm going to snip that off okay so what I've got now is I'm just going to bring some of my pliers in there so now we want to take it from this coil into this this flower so the first thing I'm going to do I know that I need a couple of ends here to uh, secure so I can form the shape and I can make it look like a flower but I do need two ends so that I can I can secure it and make so make sure that it holds the shape so the first thing is I've got my finger in my right hand and I'm like putting that almost through and supporting that that coil I'm going to open up that first bit and I know then already that I've got an end there that I can uh, use and you can see them here where I can secure it so I know I've got this okay so then what I want to do is I'm going to then move forward and just put my finger in so that I take one full circle okay and a grip I'm going to move that out so I'm gripping here so I know that I've still got that one full circle where it crosses over here and then I sort of move that out so ideally the only piece of wire that should move is almost this area this circle will stay the same because I'm pinching here and I'm just move and my finger here is supporting the other circles okay so we'll do that again so we're looking to get where my thumb is there it's that angle that we want so we're going to splay out and to get that that ring of the circles so again I separate out one full circle I'm going to hold there my fingers in here supporting it I'm going to bring it round okay so I'm going to keep going so I've got one two so this one will be the third so separate out bring it round and you can see so I'm sort of going take making it so that, that I get full circles every time but I'm also then going around in that circle again so we'll take one more let's go here so separate out and bring that round so again support it so you can see so it's sort of going against my finger there and it's giving me that nice angle so it's sort of going around so if we look now one two three four five and I still got some extra so what can happen especially if this may be your first go at it this first one can sometimes be a bit of a um, bit messier than the others you tend to get better as you go around so if that's the case and you've got a little bit more here you've, you've had a practice of four by then you can always we can get rid of that one and we can keep going round. so I'm going to go let's go another one there okay so we've now got one two three four five okay and I've still got two tails so now what I can do is I'm going to start and bring that in make sure I'm happy with the position before I lock it in place so it might be that I need to steal a little bit say if these these two here weren't particularly well formed I could just open them or close them close them up make sure that I'm happy with the positioning how neat they are before I lock them in place so I'm going to first of all I'm going to hold make sure I hold the tail here because if I don't when I pull on it what's going to happen is the, that pressure will make this this one reduce so I'm going to hold here and I take this one tail and so I'm going to come down I'm almost tying a knot around it so I'm going to bend it up come through the middle and do as much as I can with my fingers when it gets to this point what I might have to do is then go in with my chain nose pliers and just give that a pinch so I'm just going to lock that in okay so that's locked in there I'm going to turn it over move that out of the way so we don't get confused with which wire is which so now we need to lock this one in in place so I'm going to hold here again make sure I'm happy with the the shape of it and I'm going to bring that in there and again this one I've because I, I've, I've shaped it so this one I was work hardened a little bit more so I really do need to go in my pliers to get that 
and we'll snip that. I'm going to snip that one off. I'm going to keep this long one just for the moment. And then I'm really going to go in and give that a squeeze. Okay. So I can also then go back in and sort of reduce that, that central part. So again, if I move that out of the way so you can see, the more I sort of push in like that, you can see this area reduces. Unless you're going to fill that, that middle section with something, you know, really, really big, you want to try and get it so that whatever it is that you're having in that centre is going to cover up that area, okay? So what we've got now is the frame. So what I want to do now is I'm going to take that so that rather than these circles that it comes into this more of a petal shape. So again, it's thinking about with, with all wire work, you're thinking if you want to form it and shape it, you want to make sure that you've got control of the piece of wire that it is that you, that you want to form and shape. So that you're just, as a, an, almost like in your mind, isolate that area so that you control which bit changes shape. If I just held here, so I'm going to hold it on this side, the, and I want to make the petal, the, the point of the petal here, and I make a, I try and put pressure on here, you can see what's happening. The whole thing is moving and going to come out of shape. I might get a slight point there, but I will have also stolen wire from this, this circle, so that's going to reduce that one, and it's pulling the whole thing out of shape. So when, if I think about it, I want to make the change and form this area. I'm going to bring my fingers from here into here. So now, what my thumb and my finger are doing are blocking off the rest of the, the wire work. The only bit that's going to move is hopefully this circle. So I'm going to come in with my chain nose pliers. You can see I'm angling them. And I'm just going to go in and give that a pinch there. Now, hopefully what will have happened by holding here, the rest of it won't have moved. So I'm going to keep moving round and again, pinch in the, the same place. And you're ideally trying to get that point so it's sort of like a mid, so it's going to be opposite. What you don't want to do is you don't want to go sort of, so if we try and do one here, so you can see I'm not really at that. If that's sort of maybe our 12 o'clock position, I'm sort of a bit, lot more over there because my point is going to be in the wrong place. If that does happen, you just pinch back in your carefully in your chain those pliers. But I'm just going to go back in and you can make this as, as pointy or uh, as you want really. So if we want you could do a really exaggerated, you can see the difference in the shape there. So I'm really pulling that out. And again, we'll do another one there. You can see the difference. So something like that. So what I'd say, to, so that your, your flower looks as neat as possible, maybe try and keep them all the same. So you can see these ones are slightly more elongated. So that is how we have got our flower shape, okay? So you can see, so that's worked out. It's to give you an idea of, of, of scale. So this looked like quite a small uh, mandrel. It's actually created like quite a big flower. So if you're gonna do this in sterling silver, what I'd say is, maybe think about reducing down. So I've actually done quite a large flower on mine, so it's probably is something in between the, um, the size of those. So you can see how um, it is quite a big pendant. It actually looks really nice as well in a, in a more delicate size. Um, if, you, if you want to do that, so that's where, so if you want to work with your bale making pliers, so if we, if we look at something like this, and I'm gonna work on the larger one. So again, following that, that process, we're just working on a different mandrel. So you can see, so I've got the wire in my left hand. In my dominant hand, I've got the tool that I'm gonna be turning and I'm gonna be turning it away from me. So I'm gonna pop that in and I can turn and make the shape like that. And I'm moving up the mandrel. So in the same way, just opening and closing, I'm gonna do a few more than I need. So I know I need at least five circles. So let's do a few more, there we are. And I'm just gonna snip that off. So you can see it's a much smaller. 
So again, I'm holding it like this. I'm going to open up and take a little bit of that one so I know I've got somewhere to... And I can already feel by doing that on there, just the, just the, the process of, of work using the wire on the, on the wire itself just has work hardened it considerably and it's a smaller circle. So again, I'm going to take my, get my finger in there. I'm going to hold, support that and bring round. So again, bring it, separate the circle and bring round. Separate the circle and bring that round. And so I need one more. So again, separate the circle and bring that round. So this one, I've only, I didn't have enough on that one actually, look for another full circle. So I need to make sure that that one is okay, but I've still got enough of a tail. And you can see the difference in the size there. And what's really, really lovely when you've done quite a few of these is to, is to layer them up. That works really nicely. If I just bring in uh, this one, you can see how that would work and have a play about with whether you're gonna work with some of the, the woven ones, some of the ones leaving it plain, layering up works really nicely. So in the same way you would secure, you would secure this using the two tails. And you can see on this one, it's a lot smaller, that area in the middle. Okay, so have a real, have a play about with different, different size mandrels. Um, I mean, to say different sizes of, of wire, um, if you go above say a one mil, you'll just need a bit more strength um, to, to form it, uh, but absolutely it'll work and you can hammer the, that framework as well. So that is how you would make your, uh, the framework that you're going to start with. So we wanna think about, if you look at the petals themselves uh, on the pendant, what you've got is, um, we've got, we filled it with uh, that figure of eight weave. So a figure of eight weave is a lovely weave and it's a really good for filling in areas. Um, uh, you can um, change sort of like how open it is. So um, when we start to do it, uh, you can see how, you can see so it's really quite dense and um, what we're seeing in that, in that example is a lot of the silver. We can alter the weave ever so slightly by just doing one, one thing, um, which, which will mean it becomes a lot more open. Figure of eight weave is really great for uh, doing bales, um, lots of wire work like that. What's going to be slightly different with this one is um, we're going to do a, a figure of eight weave, but we're going to do it in, a, in an enclosed shape. So usually when you'd be doing wire work, you might have an open end, which means that you can keep your wire on the reel and you can do your weave and you don't have to worry about cutting set lengths. But when we're going to work with the, the petals, I'll bring this one back in. By, when we form the shape of, of, of the flower, we've closed off, there are, there are no open ends here. So we are gonna to have to spend a little bit more time on looking at our tension and how we handle the wire itself. And it's really important that maybe, I don't know, maybe if you've worked with beading thread before or the cords, uh, wire is, is very different. What we can't do is we can't uh, allow kinks to stay in, in our wire. We, if, we, if we sort of cross over, so if we're working with our wire, and it just kinks almost like goes back on itself like this. We must get rid of that straight away because if we pull on there, what's gonna happen is it, we're gonna put a lot of um, tension on there. It's gonna become very brittle and it will snap. So it's, it's really important that we don't try and sort of go back and forth and that we have good control over it. And that, like I say, so when you're working in that closed framework, it is slightly different to uh, when, if you've got two open ends. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up so, and show you on the large, um, the large wires how we start that, that figure of eight and then I will show you on the actual size as well. So this, this one sort of replicates so one petal. So if we imagine that we've got a really, really big flower here but we're going to concentrate and do one at a time and this is going to be the, um, how, we, how we do the weave. The purple wire represents your 0.4. Okay, so what I'm going to do is obviously this would be on that so that you'd have all of these petals here, so we'd have five of these to do. So I'm going to take my 0.4 and I've had to cut it off the reel because like I say, it's, um, we, we've got a closed form here that we're going to fill. 
I'm starting with the my weaving wire and it's sitting underneath underneath the framework and I'm going to just hold on to that a little bit so that it doesn't slide out when I put a bit of pressure on it here. I'm going to start here and work my way uh, to the point there. So I'm going to hold a little bit on here. Now I'm going to wrap, so I'm going to go through here and you can see I made it a little bit of a curve here with my finger and it's going to pull through and let that come all the way through. And again, then I go back very, very closely within millimetres of that, that framework, that working area. I'm going to bring it and come round. So I've wrapped sort of twice around there. Then again, I've got that natural curve because it sort of took the curve of my thumb and I push through and bring that through. So now I'm going to come underneath the other side of the framework. So if we split this into two, we've got this side and we've got this side. So I'm going to bring it round and up and over and back through. And you can see when I'm pulling it through, trying to keep it so that it doesn't kink. And I'm also trying not, I don't want to do this. Lots and lots of that. It's really tempting to do that. What I don't want to do is I don't want to overwork it because it's just going to get harder and, and harder. I want to keep it as soft and as tactile as possible. If I've got like a, a kink in it, then absolutely you can give that a little bit of a, um, you know, encourage that kink to, to come out and look straight. But so I'm going to, so I've gone once around that framework and so I'm going to come over again. And again, I'm working very, very closely to that, that the wrap that I put before it, bring through. and I cross over to the other side. So again, I'm gonna go once and twice, bring through and cross over the other side. And again, twice and over the other side. So it's called a figure of eight because if we look at it from sort of that cross section through here, it's a little bit, it's a bit curved at the moment, but you have that that figure of eight. So that wire now looks like, looks like an eight or an infinity. So that's why it's called a figure of eight. So when I, when I talked about um, the different effects you can get with a figure of eight weave, if you want it, so this one uh, is a straightforward as I've done here. So it's, it's two, two wraps and then I sort of uh, cross over and go onto the other side. If I want it to be so it's more open, what I can do is I can just increase the amount of wraps that I put on this side. So I was doing two. So if we have a look, so I'm gonna then move that out of the way. So this time I've done, so one, two. So usually I'd be going back under and to go onto that side. I'm gonna go again, so I'm gonna go three on here. And you can see what that's done is that's, that has opened up the gap and the distance to this one. So now when I go over and across to the other side, what will start to happen is that distance between each wrap, you can see it's larger, which therefore opens up the weave. So again, so I'll come over to this side. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, and come over. So this one will go one, two, three, four, five, might even do one more, I'll do six. And we can really see how that then exaggerates that and come up through here. So we're gonna go this side, we're coming now, gonna wrap on the other side. Again, one, two, three, four, five, six, and come over. And you can see now how that is really starting to open that up. By doing that, if the, now what we're working with here is a really, is, you know, it's an even shape. This can really, really come into its own. If you think about maybe, uh, you know, like a, a, maybe an ammonite or something like that, if you're weaving, you've got a large curve going here, but then it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So if I wanted to get a nice even weave when I was doing this and say this was my inner circle, so I've got less framework than on the outer one, 
I could do fewer wraps here, more wraps here, so that I get this one is going to fill up quicker than this side. Because if I did six and six and this is a smaller framework, this is going to get really too full and this one would be, would be empty. So you can see, so I would go, if, if imagine this was sort of like a spiral like that. So this was our smaller side. So I'm going to go maybe two on here. I might do three on here and then I can come up. But then I'd carry on and do six on here. And what will start to happen is this larger framework will fill up sooner. And I'm going to come back over and do two on there. And then back up. And then you would have that sort of that flaring out. So that's where that really, really comes into its own. So if we look at it now on the actual pieces, so hopefully that, that has gone, um, you've, got, you've got, the, got to grips with that, that weave. So if we actually have a look at the, the piece itself. So again, so like I say, I'm probably going to, so with this one, this flower was made up with, um, <clears throat> on the bale making. So probably, uh, I would say that's, a, I think that might be about a nine mil um, diameter, this larger one. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna go with, uh, I've probably got about, maybe about 30 centimeters here, because remember we need to cut that cut that off and we'll see how we get on. Okay, so you can see, so I've done all the others on here, so I'm gonna start off on this one. So in exactly the same way, but you're actually seeing it on the scale that it is. So I'm gonna, because we're working with our sterling silver, I don't wanna have like a big long lengths of, of this wire. I'm gonna, you know, it's, it's you know, that precious metal. So I'm gonna start again. So I've got a little bit of a tail here, bring it down. And I can already see, so on this little bit here, I have got that little, I've got a bit of a kink. So I'm just gonna, not too much, just get that out while I can access it. So bringing down, you can see how very, very close I'm working to that weave and being mindful now of that, that, that area where there's potential weakness. If you feel like it might go just, it. It's false economy to leave it in there because chances are it's going to snap. So I would say get, get rid of it at this point. So you can see, so this one, the weave I'm going to do on here, I want it nice and really, really full of silver. So I am doing two, two wraps on either side and I'm working so closely to the previous wrap using my nail and I haven't got very much nails at the moment, but I'm just using that to just get that slight curve and push through, making sure that the, the wrap that I do next sits really nicely to the one previously, and push through, and we can start to see how this builds up. So let's bring this in, and we can see how this is really, really starting to, and the other thing, when you are working with your sterling silver, you'll be able to feel, you know, once you start adding this, this 0.4, the weight of the piece is, is really lovely. So, you know, it's gonna feel beautiful to wear as well if you are gonna have that, that, all that silver with your South Sea Pearl. You want something nice and special with it, don't you? So you can see I'm bringing this up. Now, what we're doing is as we're going this, I'm sticking with that um, two wraps on either side. And you can see I'm actually coming up very closely. I'll be coming up to uh, probably about the midway point. So I'm gonna do a few more. And what you'll notice is, so what we, when we were weaving, we were weaving up to a wide point. Once we get past that halfway, the weave, it, the weave doesn't change, but the, the, the framework does. So it's gonna go down to a point. So what we have to think about is, we want to make sure that we've got an, a neat weave and then it's compact. But what's gonna happen is, it's gonna start, it's gonna want to go that way. So every time that you go sort of across, you need to be pushing that, pushing that back. So on this one here, I think I'm about at the widest point and I'm starting to taper down. So I'm holding here, I'm really gonna go in and pull that quite tightly. Using this finger now to hold and support that weave there, bring it round 
and I've just got a bit more control now of that weave because it's going to want to just pull down to that narrower point. If I don't control it, what I'd have is I'd have a bit of a gap in there. So make sure that those wraps are sitting next to each other and not one on top of each other. So again, just get that tension right. We really are coming down, starting tapering into that, the point of the petal now. So, and you can see all the time I'm moving the, the whole piece around so that I can, um, I can see all the way around it. I'm not sort of keeping it static like that. You can just move around so that you can have the easiest access with that, that weave. What you might find as well when you're, when you're working uh, with this 0 0.4, it's going back and forth, back and forth. You might get a little bit that you're work hardening it a little bit, but you can just take your time. And I really am coming into that, that point now. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep going. It's getting a little bit fiddlier now because the area that I can get my wire through is, is um, decreasing. And I'm coming to the end. I've got much wire left. So I'm gonna go and back through. So using my thumbnail to just hold and support that. So again, two wraps here and bring it through. And again, just that into that small space is getting smaller and smaller, which is fiddlier, but that's what you want to see because otherwise you'd just be weaving. Weaving for infinity, which as much as I love weaving, I think might send me crazy. So again, nearly there, and I'm gonna bring that through. So what we've got, you can see, to, to, maybe to help you out if you needed it, what I could do is I could use my chain nose pliers just to poke that through. And I think if I look at this, I could probably get maybe one more one more yeah I think I'm going to stop there so now at this bit what I'm going to do I'm just going to I've got an, I've got the open front I've got everything is is a full the weave is full now and that that petal is it's full of that lovely weave but I have got this tiny bit at the end so what I'm going to do is I'm going to I don't think I can get another um, uh, line going across so I'm just going to go in and it's like just you're coiling around that framework to fill it in so I'm just taking the 0.4 and I'm going to wrap that and let's bring this in. So you can see I'm trying, I'm only holding the right at the end. I'm going to try and get each of those wraps so that they're sitting next to each other and sitting next to each other, not overlapping. So I'm just going to pull that back, probably need maybe one more. And I'm going to bring that in. Okay, so just bring that through and we'll get rid of that. So I'm going to snip that off. I'm snipping it off there just at the back and give that a pinch together. So I'm just going to finish this one off. So this is the one that I'd prepped and let's bring this through. So again, we've got a small amount, just a tiny gap there. So I'm just going to hand coil in so that you've got something that looks like that. So what, what you're ideally looking for is you don't want too much of that framework. So we've now got our flower and we've used all the, what we've done is we've, we've done the, the weave all the way through and we've done quite a compact weave. So that's our, that's our flower framework. Now, because this is actually, and when we, when we start to shape the flower, we can go in and form that. It's actually pretty um, sturdy. So it looks really lovely and delicate, but because we've work hardened it, we've got a lot of weave, weaving in there that actually um, it's a pretty sturdy piece. It's going to hold its shape really well. So we're going to put that to the side for a minute. And what we're going to do now is we're going to look at that central part. So we've got that, um, we've got stamen in there. So what I want to do is if I bring this in and we'll have a look at what that stamen is, um, is made up of. So if I just move some of these bits out of the way. 
And you can make this as, as large or as small as, as you want it to be. So if we have a look at this, so we've got a section here, almost looks like, and this is a nice way you can work with this as well as for a cobweb if you wanted to. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, again, we're gonna do our weaving with a, a, a 0.4. But what we're going to do is we're going to make our, they look like head pins. We're actually going to do sort of um, the, uh, the double end of those. So if I move this out of the way, I'm going to bring my torch in now. So I'm going to take some of my structural wire. I'm going to cut a length. So I've probably got maybe about an inch and a half there. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my torch. So I've got my reverse action tweezers. I've got my pot of water and I'm gonna work with my torch there. Okay. What I might do, I don't, if I come here, would that, would that make a difference, do you think, if I maybe bring that in there? So that, because I can't, unfortunately, what you're doing with this is you want um, your gravity to help you. So I can't turn it around. So what I could do is if I have it like something like that, maybe. So what you're looking to do with this is you want to have, so if I bring that in, so there we go, that's perfect. Thank you so much. So I'm going to set my torch up and we're going to look at the end, the end of the, the wire. Okay, so if I just light my torch. Okay, so you can see you've got the flame there and what we're going to do is we're going to pop the wire into, into that flame and you can see how that then balls up. And turn it over and we're going to ball up the other end. There we go, okay? So I'm gonna pop that out of the way and that's gone into, into here. Now, once it goes into the water and you've heard that hiss, it's fine to, you're absolutely safe to pick that up and it's nice, it's, it's cool and you can hand, you know, handle it no problem. So you can see now, so I've almost got that double-ended, that, that um, head, uh, like a head pin there. Okay, and we've got the two balls there. If you've got pickle, brilliant, pop it in pickle. Otherwise you can use your, um, like I say, that buffer and, and take off that, um, that discoloration there. So you would need to do maybe three or four, depending on how many stamen you want. That's how you would work um, and to create those. So I'm just gonna move that out of the way because that torch is gonna be hot as well. So obviously always be really careful with that. And let's move this back in. So you can see with that, that would then give me all of these. You can see I've, I've um, cleaned them all up so they you know, be nice and shiny again. So I'm gonna make these into, into sort of like these V shapes. So I'm gonna bring in, find the midpoint. And, let's, and if, if you don't get the midpoint, it's fine because not all stamen are gonna be, you know, totally um, symmetrical and the same length. So it really doesn't matter if they are slightly different, um, different lengths. So again with this one, so I'll go with three here. Let me bring that in. So what we wanna do is we wanna make something that looks like that because that's then gonna sit into the flower. So this time I can do my, uh, like a figure of eight weave, I'm gonna just wrap around, but I don't have to worry. I've got loads of open ends here, so I don't have to worry. Um, I don't have to worry uh, about cutting uh, the, the length of, of wire. So I'm just gonna wrap, start wrapping here. So I just need to do it the other way because I'm coming outwards. So make sure that my little tail is tucked in. Like with all wire work, when you, if you're binding, if you're binding lots of structural wires with a finer wire at the beginning, it can be a little bit fiddly. So I'm going to take the next one. So I'm bringing that next sort of V in and I come and wrap just once around there. Position it, come and wrap once around there. So I'm going underneath on this one and bring that round. Let's have the next one. 
bring that in. So this one, I'm coming from underneath, so I need to come over the top. So that figure of eight is almost going around like that. So bring that in, figure of eight, around here. Now don't worry about this bit because this bit is gonna get hidden. Your pearl is gonna hide this section. So again, get this all bound and then we can make it look a bit tidier. So what I'm going to do now, and you can do a couple of, couple of different ways of this to get that, that frill. So now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do a straightforward, get those into position and do wraps here. So I'm going once over the top, move it round, once over the top, move it round, over the top, move it round, over the top, move it round, Get that little tail out of the way. I might trim that off actually. I'll get rid of that so it doesn't confuse things. Over the top and bring it around. Now in the same as the figure of eight weaves, a different, we're wrapping it in a different way. But you can see, so if I want the, the, the wires that are going across to be not as compact, I would just wrap more times going around. So the difference would be what we've been doing is this. So once around, then we cross over, once around, we cross over. Now on this one, if I want a bigger gap, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go once, twice, might go again, and then I can bring that in once, twice, and then go again. And what that will do is that will increase the, the gap in between each of those wraps that are going around. We're going to just keep going so that we fill that area. And you can see how quickly this builds up. So this is a lovely, lovely way of, if you like, I mean, you have to wait a few months now for Halloween to come around again, but this is a great way of doing your, your cobweb designs. So we can see how this really, really quickly is building up. So if you make, uh, I make like little, little baskets or little containers, this is how I start them off as well, because You've got a really strong, nice framework and base there. We can see how this is starting to, to go. So you can see there. So this would actually be the, the front and you can see the back's pretty nice as well and nice and neat and tidy. Okay. So it's up to you how, how far you go out with that. So if I bring this one in, just gonna snip that off there. So what we want to do is we want to take it now from this uh, where it's flat, like that, and we're just going to manipulate and shape it a little bit. So I'm going to start and just give these, while, just while I can access all of it, I'm just going to give that a bit of a shape in the stamen. I can go back in and shape those as well when it's in position. What I'm also want to do is to give a little bit of a frill, which will add, just add interest, but it also changes the luster of, of it as well by adding in those, um, uh, almost like you're, you're creating facets. So if we look at this one, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna take my chain nose, uh, sorry, round nose pliers, and I'm not, I'm not squeezing down, I'm just using it as to, to shape and just adding in that frill. And you can see that's giving it just a nice added extra shape. So I'm just gonna go in and just work that one a little bit more because these are a bit wider because I come out and done a bit more of the weave. So when you're actually doing it, if you come out a little bit wider, you can see you get, you see the more of that, that frill. And it always reminds me of if you, um, if you like uh, glass sculpture, if you look at Dale Chihuly, this is reminiscent of his, his sort of style there, the sort of lovely fans and nice curves and shapes. So we've now got the stamen is all in there. So what we can do now is we can put the two together. We've got that lovely open space here. So we know we've got a section that that is gonna sit nicely in. So to lock this into place, we're now gonna use again that, that 0 0.4, almost like a needle and thread now. So let's bring this in. So we're gonna lay one on top of the other. 
can bring my pearl in now. Okay, so I'm going to have something something like that. I'm not going to shape this one yet until it's all, all together. I think I can get rid of that tail now. So it's really try and get into the habit when you're doing wire work. Leave as many tails on as you can really, as you, as you can handle as you're weaving and they don't irritate you and get in the way because you never know when you're going to need them. So with this one, I'm going to add in, so little tail here, I'm going to add into this framework. So I'm just holding, just anchoring in as if you were sewing. We just want to make sure that that is nice and secure on there. So a good few nice tight wraps into that framework. I'm going to bring it up through the middle. Might actually come across this side as well, just for... No, actually, I'll go into that section there. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to find that central point here. Feed that all the way through. So that, that is then going to sit in. And it's a case of... Because, you know, they're handmade, they're all going to be different, aren't they? You're looking to get where that sits neatly and nicely. It might be different in some cases. I'm going to bring that through and let's push that in. So I'm going to find where. Let's bring that in there. Make sure it doesn't kink. So though you're using it like a needle and thread, Remember, it's not a needle and thread, so just keep control of that wire. So now you're just looking to go in wherever you can into that framework so that it gets nice and secure and it stops wobbling around. So make sure it's sitting central as well. You don't want it so that it's sort of going off to one side. Give that a wiggle through the weave if you need to. Let's bring that in. And again, come up through. And what can happen, it's just happened then, is you can think that you're going back to secure it, but you're actually going uh, sort of back on yourself. So it takes the stitch that you've just done away. So I'll just repeat that. So I'm going to go through that wire work, bit of a wiggle. And if you find that it's you're struggling to get it through, I'm just going to use my pliers just to open that Open the weave just a little bit on in the, that middle part because the pearl's going to cover it. And I'm going back through. So pull, pull that through. Again, make sure I don't get any kinks in that wire. Let's bring that in so that it now starts to really secure where we're going. I think I need, could do with one more stitch coming up through that framework there. So I might make another hole, a little gap in the, the weave of the stamen and come up through there. So when you've done that, so let's look, let's look where we are. So before I put the pearl in, I wanna make sure that I am happy with that positioning of that central part. So I'm going to take this now. I've, I have mangled the end a little bit, so I'm going to snip that off. I'm going to take my pearl and pop that in there. So now what we want to do is we're going to position this, this central pearl, into that middle part. So I'm going to have it coming something like that. And again, we might need to play about with the weave, give it a bit of a wiggle so that it pops through. There it comes at the back. That's a lot easier than I thought it would be. So let's bring that through and again, make sure that it doesn't kink at that point. And now I want to then bring this through. So I'm looking now, I can go in. Once I've secured that, that pearl, I can just get rid of that tail anywhere there. So again, I'm gonna snip off all of these tails make the effort to just go in, tuck in those tiny little bits. Because remember, if you are going to have this as a pendant, that's going to be next to the skin. So sort of do that, that finger test of making sure. So what you can do then is you can either lead these stamens so that they're all sort of coming out like this. We could bring it in a little bit. 
And let's bring that in a little bit more as well. So you see I'm just going in. And what's lovely with wire work is, you know, it's a, it's a 3D piece. So how it looks like this, but then how it also sits and looks like that. So that's where we know that we've made these flat, but there's nothing to stop us from, so if I grip here and I come and turn those out a bit. So I'm gonna bring that through and we can shape these or we could do the and bring them in so it's more of a sort of a um, not necessarily a bit more you know opened flowers but closed so you can see there so what we want to do is we want to think about it that we're going to make this into that that pendant so what we would do is we would look at if our if our petals are all the same shape we don't have to we can go into any one if there's one that you feel is maybe uh, as you've made it a little bit bigger or it's a bit smaller, don't forget by shaping it like that, you can make it look larger or smaller to try and get that balance. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to now look at which way I want. To, I think I'm going to have it so that the hanging point is going to be. I might do it so it's so it's like that. I think the position with the pearl and I've got quite a nice gap in this one here. So I'm going to go in with my round nose flies and just open up that weave just a little bit so I can get a jump ring through. So I just pushed it through here. I'm going to get one of my jump rings and then we can feed that, feed that through. And so bring that in and that then closes up. So we know now we've got a bale pointing in the right direction. So your chain can go on there. You can do any sort of manipulation that you want. But that frame is just, you know, it's, it frames that, that, that lovely South Sea Pearl really, really nicely. Um, and there's nothing to stop you, nothing to stop you from doing that large flower and then uh, doing the smaller flower that I've done and putting the two together. So, and then, then layering up so you'd have flower, smaller flower, and then the stamen working with the frame, adding the framework uh, and no weave. So you can see by, by doing that, there's loads and loads of different ways. Once you've got, once you've worked out how to make that, that flower, that floral framework, it's just about how long you're happy to, uh, to work at and weave. So I hope that's been useful. Um, it's a favorite of mine doing those flowers and I think it works really well with what's in your advent. So um, yeah, I hope that's been helpful. Have a lovely weekend, jewelry makers, and I'll, uh, I'll see you next week.